After a long road trip, Toronto FC is back home. And what a homecoming. Aston Villa of the English Premier League is the opponent. We have it for you next on Fox Soccer Channel. Toronto, Canada is the place, one of the best atmospheres in Major League Soccer and an international flavor tonight as from BMO Field in Toronto, Canada. The home team, Toronto FC, will be tested by Aston Villa in this match view tonight on Fox Soccer Channel. Hello everyone, I'm Dave Jotslow and Christopher Sullivan. Welcome to this match tonight. And Toronto FC, midway through a Major League Soccer campaign. Aston Villa full of ambition, eager to start their season. So given that, Christopher, as we've talked about it, we expect a friendly full of commitment. I think lots of commitment. I like the way that these teams match up. It's very exciting. Toronto's coming back home. They've been away for six games, playing in front of their fans that are very, very creative, unbelievable atmosphere, and they're measuring themselves against a team that wants to keep compete for Europe. So I think it should be very exciting. Indeed, that Aston Villa side full of ambition. Now it is, after all, a small world. And with more on that, third member of our broadcast team, Mark Rogandino. Mark? Guys, you hear the phrase six degrees of separation used, referring to how small the world really is. And in soccer, that certainly is true, but it might be even smaller. Follow me here as I illustrate my point. Thomas Sorensen, the goalkeeper for Aston Villa, he used to be former teammates with Danny Dicchio, a forward now here in Toronto from their days in Sunderland. Of course, Dicchio is now a teammate of Andy Welsh, who played for Leicester City, the side that lost 3-2 to two to this Aston Villa club last October in the third round of the Carling Cup. I mentioned Leicester City. Well, Leicester City used to be coached by Martin O'Neill, who, of course, is now the man in charge of taking this Aston Villa side back to the top of the Barclays Premier League. Guys? All right, let's get to it. The lineups tonight, Toronto FC. They're missing Jeff Cunningham because of injury, but this is a familiar setup, Christopher. Yeah, and I think it's going to be an interesting test. They need to keep possession, and they need to play very quickly in transition. They're coming out in a 4-4-2. Edu is going to have his hands full today, or his feet full. He's going to be challenged in the midfield. O'Brien will take that wide position where he can come in with card blanche and orchestrate behind the two forwards. Dicchio and Samuel, each game, they get a little better chemistry. Should be interesting tonight. We expect a full lineup tonight from Aston Villa, but the starting 11 includes a new face to Aston Villa, Marlon Hayward. And I like this lineup. They're playing a 4-4-2. Gareth Barry is one of the talented players in the midfield. Petrov is starting to come on. He's settled there with the team. Up front, you got Harewood, who plays very similar to Caru, so he gives you the point with his back to goal. Keep an eye on Zoltan Stiver, number seven. Young Hungarian, came from Uwe Doza. They said he's done really well during this week in training. All right, I think we're set. It is tonight from Toronto, Toronto FC. And Aston Villa, we're coming back with the kickoff and first half in just a moment, right here on FSC. Back in Toronto, Canada, where the home team, Toronto FC, has not played since June 17th. They had something called the uh, FIFA Under-20 World Cup, of course, uh, just taking Canada by storm. But now Toronto FC back home to test Aston Villa. Aston Villa in their first preseason match. And yes, for Aston Villa, they may feel right at home because the great support here from the soccer fans in Toronto, Canada. And really, there's been a great atmosphere building up to this uh, match, Christopher, is uh, Mo Johnston. The uh, head coach of uh, Toronto FC, he took Martin O'Neill to the police concert on, on Monday night, so they were getting on real well. Well, I think those two are having fun, and, and I like Martin O'Neill said, clearly we're coming here, we're going to try to win. I mean, so even though they were friends, they had a great time at the concert, he said, we're coming out here with an objective. He wants to get this team ready so they can compete against the four big ones. You see Martin O'Neill right there, very talented coach. He's done so much. He had that great spell, won three championships in Scotland, three cups. Set for the kickoff tonight, Toronto FC and Aston Villa. <laughs> Underway is Toronto FC to kick it off. Again, as Christopher mentioned, Martin O'Neill a three. League titles with Glasgow Celtic, and now this is a Aston Villa team on the attack with Gareth Barry putting the pressure on Marvell Wynn that they believe they can get back among the elite in the Barclays uh, Premier League as last year they finished 11th. Wasn't too long ago they were sixth in that table. But they, Europe is their goal to find a spot in Europe. Yeah. 
Ball is touched back to Thomas Sorensen, the goalkeeper, one of 17 internationals. Yeah, a lot this of internationals player in this team, junior international team, senior international. You have Swedes, Danes, Scottish internationals. And in that way, include youth internationals. This is Marlon Harewood battling for it, but Carl Robinson coming over the very though. Trying to slot it wide to Zoltan Steiber. Wynn is able to clear, but a throw in. You see Garrett Bell, he had a good look on goal right there with a the missed touch. He should have taken a shot. He looked wide out to Zoltan Steiber. Barry, who's been capped by England. And no trouble for David Monsalve. He is a under-20 player for the uh, Toronto, uh, for the Canadian under-20s and was a backup at the just-completed under-20 World Cup. Is Toronto has really had some goalkeeping challenges with Greg Sutton still sidelined with a concussion that he suffered while training with the Canadian national team at the Gold Cup. Colin Samuel knocking it back to Robinson. And Salve pressured. And that forces a turnover. Gareth Berry searching. Wanted to get it wide to Ashley Young. A free kick coming up for Toronto FC. So look at Gareth Berry. You gotta like that quick restart right here out to Andy Wells. First sequence has been good. They're moving the ball well, finding the angles. A little wide here on this shot. Maurice do with the uh, attempt. Goal kick coming up. Now, before the match, we had a chance to ask Martin O'Neill about this, his first preseason test. A bit of fitness for a start would be very important. Obviously, competition as well, too, because that will be quite strong. And I think that, uh, you no, know, uh, the American League should not be underestimated. Uh, I think Everton uh, could beat them at Salt Lake. And uh, so we, we try and avoid defeat. Of course, we're playing in, uh, in field turf here. It's a new experience for us again. And um, while it's not disconcerting, it is uh, it, uh, it might cause just minor problems for us. Marvell Wynn getting forward on the flank. Sends it in at the six. Aston Villa needs to try to sort things out. An attempt there taken by Maurice Adu. Again getting forward from the midfield, and they've won a corner kick. Again, great football right out of the midfield here. You're getting the combination play, the sequence, the transition from that middle line going forward. Wide overlapping run. This is good football from the start from Toronto. Major League Soccer also Ronnie O'Brien. Sending this one in, trying to get on to it. Tyrone Marshall. Marlon Harewood back defending. He is the forward they signed from West Ham. Luke Moore now on to a nice touch. Nice. Gareth Berry through the midfield. Stiver is making a run, but to no avail. And they'll try over the top. But well, you're starting to get some early runs from Samuel that's getting from the point into the wide positions, and he's having Dickio pull off him a little bit. So Samuel's taking two players with him. Dickio's going to be able to operate in that little space. That's good early on that they're making those penetrations and trying to stretch out the defense of Aston Villa. This is Ashley Young. Gareth Berry will switch it wide. Stephen O'Halloran just broke into the senior side last year. Now Zoltan Steiber. Here with challenged. Steiber gets the cross off. Brennan in the box. Goal kick coming up, Toronto FC. Look at uh, Zoltan Steiber. Big chance. This is what these games are about. Big chance for this kid who is trying to show Martin O'Neill that he belongs in the senior team. Well, you see, he's clever. He likes to take people on. He gets crosses in. That's good for Hungarian football. They haven't had a big player since listing. Christian Listes has gone over to Germany. He scored two goals against Newcastle in European Champions League back 10 years ago. So it's about time that they get an international getting opportunities in an important league. Nice touch by Harewood to Petrov. Bulgarian international. And good idea. You see, little, too much. see a little bit of heaviness in the legs of the players from Aston Villa. And I think Martin O'Neill touched on that before. They're training extremely hard. We saw an interview, Dave, with Martin Larson, the Danish international. He said they're training very, 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 very tough 
you know, in these trainings. And sometimes you feel it in the legs, particularly in the first game. But I like the way that Toronto FC has come out and set the tone. They're moving the ball. It's not just with athletic ability. They're playing good football in the first five, ten minutes here. Well, the point you touched on, Christopher, some of this Aston Villa squad just reported for training last Monday because we talked about they either have 17 internationals, whether you're talking full or youth, so a number of players were busy with competitions in June. Right, and again, that's the end. Got to give credit to the coach. He knows that it's a long season in the BPL, and these players are going to be tested. They don't get much of a break over the Christmas holiday, so he gave them a rest, and now they're coming back in. This is the start of it. In the second half, though, he has a whole other team that he can put in, so they'll try to play at a high intensity, high energy, 45 minutes, 45 minutes, like what we saw with Chelsea the other day. Something yeah, Martin O'Neill talked with Mo Johnson about using more players in this match. Carl Robinson. And this is what I like about Toronto. We didn't see in the initial part of the season, Donovan wins the ball, recovers it, gets it out to Welsh. They connect right in the midfield. There's going to be a call for Toronto. They see that they're, that the understanding, the chemistry that Mo Johnson said. It takes a while. He had injured players. Now, after a month, after being away on the road, this team's starting to come together. Again, six games away. One win, three ties, and two draws. This goes back to Sorensen, the uh, keeper, the Danish international. To another international, Swedish international, Olaf Melberg. Right, and I think that the more the more that players like Robinson play those vertical balls, the easier it's going to be for Aston Villa. What really complicates for them are those angle, quick triangle passes out of transition. All right, the attack on here is Aston Villa. The flag is up. Nice. Well, you see, Steiber was clearly off right here. They have more coming back in the point. You see Steiber off and Petrov playing the through ball, but the, the timing just not in sync. But still in Petrov. One of the players we're talking about busy in June as he was with the Bulgarian national team. No score, almost eight minutes in, in Toronto, Canada. Flick backward to the keeper, Thomas Sorensen. By Gary Cahill, English under 21, central defender. What do you say, do? Controls it nicely back to Donovan. The flick by Dickio. Samuel making a run. Cahill under pressure. We'll get it wide. The throw it coming up for Toronto FC. It is the second time that we've seen Luke Moore come back in a little bit of a deeper position. And just the understanding, Barry's looking for Petrov, who's making a deeper run into the corner. They still haven't figured out. And that's that's the movements, the chemistry. That's why you have these games. You're trying to figure out the intricacies and the way the nuances of your teammates. You know, everybody's talented. We talked about it before, Dave, when we came here. Really, Aston Villa has two players for each role in each position of quality. So now it's finding the chemistry, putting the team together. So far, though, you look at the organization, the discipline, the way that Toronto has played. This is what you look for. This is the way you want to come out in the match. And that point you mentioned about the, the number of quality players Martin O'Neill has to choose from. That's why we expect real commitment to tonight is and this is their first preseason match and unveiling, if you will, from a club that really expects big things. Gardner plays it to Barry. Barry's such an important part of their midfield. Nice touch by Luke Moore. The Petrov, he won. Take a chance. Well, this is a little bit nicer, and it starts with Gardner. Nice first time touch. They really it through the midfield. Now watch this three man combination. This time they get it right. Moore's going to drop right into this hole. Just nice little quick touch. Petrov gets it on his right foot. Gets a good look on goal, just too wide. Solving the long goal kick for Dickio. Cahill able to pry it away. Ronnie O'Brien. <laughs> and sometimes Ronnie O'Brien loves those surprise Michel Platini passes looking for the 40 meter surprise. 
but uh, he has to continue to just keep playing simple. He's got a lot of players right in the neighborhood there. Keep the ball, keep possession. Colin Samuel. Samuel. Slotting a new. The back heel for Samuel broken up by Petrov. Ronnie O'Brien was trying for that dramatic switch to the point of attack that didn't quite work the oh, other way now. They got Ball slotted forward to Luke Moore. Luke Moore, top of the box. It is in the net. A goal, Aston Villa. And you really got to give credit to Ashley Young. Makes it. I mean, this was the sequence again against the run of play. Toronto looked good. Edu got in an advanced position. That left himself out. Here's the breakout in the midfield. Look, he just slots it behind the, defi the defender. He gets beaten. World class finish. Luke Moore. And there's that ball you're talking about from Ashley Young. We see Luke Moore. He puts himself in the position, just slashes right behind the defender. And you got to give Ashley Young the credit. Good vision, great timing, perfect pace on the ball. 1 0 Aston Villa. I see Tyron Marshall came up, got a little bit flat in the back and just allowed Moore to get in. He was too far away from the goal. The goalkeeper was still not far enough off his line to get out. Donovan with pressure by Ashley Young. Throw in coming up Aston Villa. So Luke Moore used mostly as a sub last season. Christens this game. Gareth Berry. Look at the wheel and deal from that midfield. And that's good experience from Barry. This is one of the things we didn't see with Celtic the last couple of games that they played. Harewood to Luke Moore. Here he comes again. And this time was better pressure from Marshall to arrive behind the midfield. Going back to Barrett, just being able to settle, pull back again, look for the rhythm, the change of rhythm, being patient, relaying the ball. Strong teams, good teams, quality teams, even when they're up against it, they're not playing very well. Like I think in the first 10 minutes, you got to give the better play to Toronto. They can still figure it out, find that counterattacking opportunity so they can settle into a match. That's what they were able to do. Stiver getting up the left side and Marco Gandino is the third member of our team and Mark what about that first goal? Yeah guys you mentioned that uh, Ashley Young playing a great ball in to lead to the goal but it was funny because uh, Todd Donovan on the left side was about equal distance from an opportunity to go after that ball but the soccer instincts still alive and uh, as that chance goes wide there but the soccer instinct I think still alive there is uh, Young got to the ball first and Don Donovan instead tried to hesitate a little bit and back away from the ball and that's what led to that lethal pass. Marlon Harewood getting a chance at the other end as we take a look at uh, Todd Donovan. Well, I think it was more than just that. I mean, the positioning of Tyrone Marshall with Moore, he was pushing up, pushing up when he could have pulled back a little bit and not have given that space. Made it more difficult for them to play behind him. O'Halloran. Very closely marked by Robinson. From the back down, Cahill, a long ball. Under pressure again, Monsalve, as Harewood was trying to find a way, but now, Stiver. And the Youth International full of energy, but Toronto now. Down 1 0. Great ball, great ball. Dickio, now to Samuel. Danny Dickio still wide. Welsh making a run up the left side, but yeah, and the final pass is not there. The, the last concentration has to be a little bit better when you get a nice diagonal ball deep past the defenders into Danny Dickey. And rather than him trying to control it himself, he flicks it on back perfectly. Great precision right to Samuel. He play it back out, but the last one is not there. I think you're going to get a chance for Aston Villa to express themselves a little more in the midfield because now Toronto has to pick up a little more in their pressure. Ashley Young pressuring Todd Donovan. He'll go the other way. Free kick for Toronto FC. 15 minutes in, electric atmosphere as you might expect in Toronto at BMO Field. 
And I think it, you made a great point, Chris, about how well Toronto has started. But they paid for it on a counterattack with a goal by Luke Moore. And that's the game. You know, you start feeling it, you start getting closer, you start moving into goal. You had that one great back heel. And Duke came, but he was in the box. If he's in the box, who's covering in the middle of the field? And that's where Ashley Young was able to come across by making that lateral movement that always works when you move from outside to the inside, then you're allowed to slot it in with that type of space. Harrowood was offside. Robinson searching for O'Brien. O'Brien does well with it. Trying to cut it back. O'Halloran didn't bite. This is great work from Oh. Indeed, Maurice, uh, pardon me, Marvell Wynn did not give up on that play. You see, Toronto is trying to stretch out Aston Villa. They're using the wide points. Ronnie O'Brien was just right out on that line. Carl Robinson, just great switch. Look at this, he's got his head up. This is about a 40 meter strike. A little acrobatic suppleness right there to take it down. Great reception. He tries to cut back again, just can't do it on the synthetic turf. O'Brien well, came up limping and continues to be in some discomfort. Such a critical role he plays creatively out wide for this Toronto FC team. David Monsalve going over the top. Skip to Samuel. Samuel turns. Dickiel just flicked it ahead. And Samuel with a chance. And this is really why these two are a great compliment because you always get the, the complimenting run off. Look at this. Samuel's taking off. He knows Dickiel can win that ball. Puts him in a good position. Uses his chest. Tries to get it down. Nice opportunity. Samuel, who of course played with Dundee United in Scotland. Now trying to find a home on this side of the Atlantic. Petrov does well, slots it ahead. Here one, save, but Salve, Luke Moore scores. Again. And again, you got to go back to the quality of a player like Petrov just to cut up the defense. He's looking to his right, playing down. Look at this right here. He's going to come right after the rebound. He gets himself in a position. Miss hit. And now he's just going to look, slot it right into the feet. Perfect precision. Moore puts himself right at the doorstep. Great finish. Petrov, you see the pressure that Christopher was talking about. Just a great ball. Yeah, excellent ball. I mean, it makes you think of players like Michael Laudrup, who did that for so long in Barcelona, Real Madrid. Just keeping the ball low on the ground, making it easy for the forward. Goalkeeper did really well on the first one. Didn't have any support on the second. Gareth Berry playing it back to his keeper. So now 2-0 in favor of Aston Villa. Both coming from Luke Moore. Well, this is what these games are all about. A player like Moore who was coming off the bench. As you talked about, Christopher, it's competition for spots. And I think even added significance being the first preseason game. I want to show Martin O'Neill what all this hard training's been all about. Throw it coming up for Aston Villa. Ashley Young. Well, I think the other thing that it shows is that no matter how good you play, and I, I'm, a, I'm a person that really likes the, the rhythm football, keeping possession, getting forward together, when you have those attacking players that can be decisive, that's why they cost so much money. That's why they're... They brought these players into the team. You see a player like Petrov, who really has underperformed for Aston Villa, starting to come on. They get the horses up in front that can finish. He puts it on their feet. Now Petrov, a player who's rumored to not be happy at Aston Villa, and those rumors have been quashed in the way he's playing tonight. He seems right, right. happy at Aston Villa. Toronto FC, Marvel Wynn getting forward to Maurice Adu. Adu does a nice job to cut it back. Toronto FC appealing for a handball that's not coming. Cahill spanked it to try to get it out of there. Marvel Wynn's not giving up on the play. Samuel goes up. Finally cleared away. The Toronto FC team has been knocking on the door a couple of times. That was another time. 
Another big opportunity. He did well to cut it. Cut it back, separated himself from two players, got a good look on goal. Then they pushed up. Couldn't do much with the deflection. That's when Dickey was asking for the handball. Olaf Melbourne playing it wide. Barry now. Harewood tracking deep into the midfield to receive the ball. Now they start the attack again. This is Luke Moore. You get a lot of concentration on on Harewood. Tyrone Marshall has been coming back with them those deep positions that they're looking to play over to Moore. Switch the point of attack to Ashley Young going at Donovan. Andy Walsh. Under pressure, handles it well. Good ball play for Samuel. He's challenged, though, by Cahill. Throw in Toronto FC. Robinson down the middle for Dickio. On the foot of Harewood, nicely done to touch it back to Barry. Now Ashley Young has Aston Villa. And Gardner getting up on an overlap. Yeah, and you have that tight pressure from Zoltan Steiber on that side. Good first reception from Marvel Wynn, but then he lost the ball under pressure. He's pretty isolated out there. They're trying to get him more advanced to get forward and kind of chase this game, get more positive in attack. Luke Moore caught offside. He was off, and then he stepped back on to receive that ball. Luke Moore, goal scorer with both goals so far. Colin Samuel. Maurice Adu, who's made himself known early in this match. Welsh, the touch into space, but nobody to make a run. So Andy Welsh and Toronto FC. The victim of a counterattack and also victim of uh, Aston Villa seizing an opportunity. Stylian Petrov really seizing on a mistake. Well, both these teams really have heavy presence up top. They both have strong forwards that are good knocking on, so you can go direct and play that vertical ball from the keepers. That's how both opportunities in the area have come. Dickey. Gardner intervenes. This will go to Toronto. Welsh, that's a good ball for Donovan. Slotted for Dickio. Dickio hits into it. The flag is up. The flag is up. No goal. But the idea is there. Quick one touch passing, moving a little bit of a diagonal, coming off the feet of three players. And I like the way that Dickio was moving into the air. Look how close this is. You get the first touch. Now you're going to get the second one right here. Oh, he's close. Oh. For me, he's on. He's on. For me, he's, he's on. on. Yeah. For the me, other, he's on. The two defenders on the far side, he is definitely on. You know, that's a pity because they've been playing well in this game. Two goals go against them. They've had the rhythm. They've responded in the midfield. And you get this great sequence going to goal. And now the other way. Harewood flipping into the six. Look more chance, but let's again take a look at this. You see, as he's stretching, ball's played there, right here, and it looks like the right back as well. Craig Gardner is keeping him on as yeah. well. Two players were keeping him on. Well, that's from our view, but not the referee assistant's view, and certainly not the view of the Toronto FC fans. But Dickio will have to. Stay with it. We have an injured player down for Toronto FC. Is that Tyrone Marshall? Yeah, Marshall shaking up as Luke Moore came crashing to the six to try to get that Harewood uh, cross on frame. Yeah, you see Moore getting up there, and he's going up over. An elbow, it looks like, Christopher. Yeah, he's just leaning over. He's trying to redirect on goal, pushing away right here. And as he comes down, he's definitely yeah. not doing that intentionally to hurt him. He's just trying to keep his balance. Well, he's following through on that header, sure. essentially. 
So still 2 nothing, but I could just sense from the way you're feeling, Tor uh, Christopher, that you like what Toronto has done. Uh, and they've come out with the right attitude. Well, they're in this game. It should be 2-1 right now. I mean, they've scored a goal. It's been legitimate. They came out, dominated the first 10 minutes with their play, moving the ball. But that back four has been a little susceptible to those movements. Through the midfield of Aston Villa, going to the, to the two forwards. One pulls away, takes a defender with him. The other one slots right through. That's what they have to figure out. You see Tyrone Marshall and Luke Moore just touching hands. Good sportsmanship there for Moore. Good to bring that out. Something happening off the ball and a sure. show of the, the sportsmanship that goes on in the game is Marshall now for Robinson. Nice touch by Welsh for Samuel. Trying to get around Olaf Melbourne. Welsh steps up. Can he get a cross off? Welsh, marked by Gardner, sends it in. Kale has to head it away. It'll be a throw in Aston Villa to Toronto FC's frustration. Mark Rovardino's on the field. Mark, what do you got? Yeah, Dave, on that last sequence that led to the offside call, which nullified that Toronto goal, Mo, Mo Johnson had a look at both of the officials and then nodded at the fourth official saying, you know, I can't believe that you didn't make that call. And then, of course, Bob Gansler, the assistant, who knows a thing or two about seeing goals over his years coaching, had a nice word with the fourth official here. All right, throw it coming up for Aston uh, Villa. A little down Mo Johnson's mind. Should have been a goal. A lot of frustration there, and I think it's not the first time that Bob Ganser has gone over to the fourth official. They got the good cop, bad cop thing going between those two coaches. Right. All right, it's not. <laughs> Mo Johnson's a nice guy. Bob Ganser, as Mark greatly points out, the, kind of the hired hitman in that situation. There's Mo. And his face says it all right there, I think. Luke Moore working hard to win it. Gardner right back getting forward Petrov nicely it was a good idea by Petrov he was trying to let it go for Gareth Barry but broke it up that was much better here for Ronnie O'Brien oh. to get it forward Dickio the Welsh they get a wide now Marvell Wynn getting forward O'Halloran is marking so is Steiber Wynn getting it off Melbourne heads it instead of Sorensen to the keeper Ronnie O'Brien good idea this is what you want when you're attacking, you're breaking out through transition, quick, get multiple players into the attack. O'Brien comes from a wide position into the center, is able to rob the ball when it was stolen there from Petrov, and here they go. Well switches position, sends him on the way, and you get a nice little turn. I think from playing with the national team, he's been so much more composed. He's using his speed, he's using his intelligence. It's a great cross, complicating things for that back four there with Aston Villa. Case there where the communication wasn't there between Melbourne and Sorensen? Well, I just think that it was difficult. You know, they didn't want to give that opportunity. Actually, you got to give credit to the defender of taking the initiative to Melbourne. and putting that out. He's yes. not leaving it the chance. Right. Experience. Gareth Berry over the top for Moore. Well, he certainly is offside. Toronto FC fans didn't like his finish after the clear whistle. And these are the passes that have been so difficult, you know, just living on that line right there, waiting to break. This time he gets caught, he's about three, four yards off. Central defender does well by pulling up. Jim Brennan. Almost a half hour in here in Toronto. Hey, Johnson, Christopher Sullivan, Mark Rogandino is Aston Villa in their first preseason match. Showing they can get it done. And those deep positions in midfield for Aston Villa, Edu needs to get a little bit closer to Petrov. Force him to go back. Force him to, to have to work hard to get a movement where he can look and have a good view of the field. Ashley Young. Young working hard with Maurice Adu. Pressuring. And it will be a free kick coming up for Aston Villa. Gareth Berry. Berry has been on Steve McLaren's radar with the English side. Stiver flags up. You know, Mark Rogandino talked about something before with Donovan and Ashley Young. 
really that was an interesting point because now every time he's looking at Young in a wide position, they're stretching him out. Martin O'Neill's pulling him out. That's separating Donovan and his ability to help out Brennan with a player like Harewood or Luke Moore. So that kind of makes more one-on-one -on -one situations between the two central backs and the two forwards. Just the presence of Ashley Lung coming in or Young staying wide. Derek Cahill battles it away from Dickio. Now, Marvell Wynn getting involved in the fray. And he's earned a free kick. Quickly taken. Colin Samuel. Oh, Halloween Market. Steiner coming over to help out. A throw in Toronto FC. And we see Carl Robinson with a quick restart, not taking that standard situation and packing in the box, just trying to get the ball right back into the feet of Samuel. Look at Marvell Wynn. He's got part of his summer at Copa America. His win. Sends it in. Adu gets on to it. Oh, a half chance for Andy Welsh. A goal kick coming up. Well, everything was set up right there on the throw, and you had Dickie and Samuel coming near. And you get the flick on by an Aston Villa player, and Adu does well. Just at the back post, and that's why he's a left midfielder. He didn't want to use his right there. My left foot, my left foot. Can't get it on his left. And never did get it on his right. Okay, coming up this Friday, United Soccer League action, Vancouver and Seattle. That's always a good matchup. 11 o'clock Eastern time, and it is live. Flag is up as Harewood gets caught. And you see more and more coaches today that are doing the opposite. They're playing players like Ronnie O'Brien on the left field so, midfield so he can dip in. Player like Walsh on the right midfield, so in those opportunities you can strike with your good foot. Free kick coming up for Jim Brennan and Toronto FC. Welsh, he's not going to get loose. Again, where Toronto has had success is the little diagonal passes, the diagonal movements, the little angle combinations, the quick transition coming through the midfield. That's been more difficult and complicated for Aston Villa. Those direct passes like that are just vertical. That makes their work easy for them. Harewood getting all the way back, trying to get to it instead, headed forward. Dickio trying to get onto it as Donovan and headed forward, and Cahill has to concede to throw it. Great pressure there from Danny Dickio. Aye, aye, aye. Well, our referee, Silvio Petrescu, Sorensen, sees the goalkeeper Sorensen pulling up and blowing the whistles. Toronto FC wanted a quick restart on the throw in. But the way he's moving, he's going to have to come out. Yeah. Right? He's not, there's not a drink of water or a little spray on his yeah, leg. There's, there's no magic uh, yeah. there. And you'd hope that he's all right. He's the Danish national keeper. He's very important. Well, Stuart Taylor Villa. is the, the sub. Spent a number of years with Arsenal, really not getting any action. Was loaned out a lot. Now he's the number two choice here at Aston Villa. So that's going to do it for Thomas Sorensen. The Danish international, six foot five inches. He is quite a presence in goal. And Chris, I have to admit, I'd be hard pressed to see when he got hurt. Now well, let's see. Maven here on a goal kick. No. Yeah, he's just approaching and he's coming through. Hamstring pull. Yep. Well, again, their regular season is just a couple of weeks away. As on the throw in now, Carl Robinson, the snap header. And a chance there for Colin Samuel, but it'll be a, a goal kick now for Stuart Taylor just into the game. You see the movement in the box, a little peel around. He knows that the player's not going to get behind him, so he tries to just get it on goal, but his body's being pushed away. Holding the ball is Luke Moore. Slotted for Petrov. Petrov, the back heel, but broken up by Tyrone Marshall. Pressure Cahill and he'll just give up the throw. And you gotta love that. I love the way that these two forwards work for each other, chasing to the corners and when the throw ends up high. 
Just saw Thomas Sorensen head to the locker room. So not a good start to the American tour for him. Donovan, I should say North American tour. Vicchio trying to get there to flick it. Another throw in coming up Toronto FC. Oh, they feel like they're hard done. They feel like they've only got one goal. It's called back. They'd love to get one before halftime. Maurice Abu charges in the box. Welsh gets a cross off. Donovan didn't shoot, played it back into midfield, and now. Toronto has to get numbers back. The counterattack on. Ashley Young getting forward. Luke Moore and Harewood are central. But Toronto has gotten the defenders back. Young gets the cross off. And it'll be a corner kick. This is better transition right here from Aston Villa through the midfield. A little more geometric passing. Come back out wide. You get a little pause from Ashley Young. They give him too much space when he finally moves forward. Picks up a corner. So Gareth Berry to take the corner. Moore trying to flick it now, shoots! Header by Kale. Let's go downstairs to Mark. Mark, what's the story on the goalkeeper? Yeah, I followed Sorensen back into the locker room and I asked him if it was an acute injury that happened right there on the goal kick. You saw it on the replay. He said that's exactly what happened. He felt the immediate sting right there in the back of his leg on his way in though. He said, I'll be fine, I just need to get out of here. Well, he's gotten up the field to the locker room. Well, one of the things we talked about earlier, and the coach said they're training extremely hard, heavy load on the muscles, and they're doing plyometrics, interval training, interval running, intense training for 90 minutes. Sometimes when you come into a game, strike the synthetic grass like that or some kind of resistance, it can pull the muscle. Marvell went under pressure. Wonders of the internet. We actually watched a couple of their training sessions yeah. online today, of all things. Andy Welsh gets it away from Ashley Young. Well, it's good that he was saying that he's going to be all right as well. I mean, Jose Mourinho was just saying it was a successful tour for us. Besides Aaron Robin with Chelsea, who had a little bit of injury coming in, and Wade Bridge, they didn't have any injury. So when you're preparing your team for three weeks out, you want to make sure you get the fitness, you get the results, you get the chemistry, and hopefully, you know, you cross your fingers that you don't have any injuries. Look at Danny Dickios. It's a long season ahead in England. It's well, still a long season in Major League Soccer. No doubt Mo Johnston dealing with his own challenges tonight to manage things, knowing he's got another league match coming up this weekend. Just played on Sunday. Ashley Young flicking it ahead. They're playing well. I think that, see how he handles that. I think Toronto has done well offensively when they're moving forward. The structure of their play has been pretty good. Dealing on those counter opportunities and the strength and the quality of those forwards and midfielders like Petrov going forward and connecting with the, those target players, that's where they've kind of suffered a little bit. But overall, I think that Toronto's been good. And that's football. You can always take a goal when you get too advanced and you're too positive. Look more. Looking for Harewood. Those are the points where they, as they're stepping out, Robinson gets a little bit deep to help out with the presence presence with the forward. It gets dropped into the midfield. They push up. You got a forward going behind them. Maurice Adu, what a ball. Potentially, anyway. But Ronnie O'Brien gives him a thumbs up. He appreciates the endeavor there. Well, they're trying to spread him out. You can see when O'Brien as well can't just stay out there all game. When he comes into the middle, he makes things happen. So he's got to have that variation. You need that interchange, and you got to take risks now. You're down 2-0 just to stimulate the attack and get forward. Welsh ahead to Dickio. Touches it to Sandal. Back to Dickio. Ooh, good idea. Yeah, he just couldn't quite switch it out wide to O'Brien. Through to Harewood. Marlon Harewood pressuring Brennan. Brennan did well. In fact, Harewood gets called for the foul. Well, Brennan did well to recover, but Harewood would have been on his way if he had a cleaner first touch. Great ball in there from the young Hungarian, Stiver, who came a little more central position. Look at this. His head's up, quick release, breaks through three players, but his touch kind of let him down. 
Now, Harold's the story of a guy trying to get his goal scoring strike back. Samuel had to dick you. Harold only had three goals last season with West Ham after frequently getting in the teens and even getting 20 several seasons ago with Nottingham Forest, but had trouble last year. Welsh. This goes off Gardner. This will be a corner kick to Toronto FC 40 minutes in. And this is when you really want to make the most out of your opportunities. You got Ronnie O'Brien who has pinpoint precision. They're going to look for Dickio. They also bring Tyrone Marshall at the back post. You got Samuel who could be very good in the heart of the area. it away. Petrov, the head of Robinson comes through. Oh, Carl Robinson on the side volley. Well, that ball just stayed up there. Watch the rebound. You get the concentration at the near post. Taylor just knocks it out. Comes really high. Look, full concentration. Strikes it well. Just inches away from the far post. What a lift that would have been. Inching closer to halftime. So Stuart Taylor coming on in goal and tested. Gareth Barry now. O'Halloran gets up. Stiver back out wide. And I think those interventions right there, like we just saw from Tyrone Marshall, that's when you want to maintain possession, get that first touch in there and not lose possession. David Monsalve, the keeper, Major League Soccer pool keeper. Under 20, Canadian international, getting the call tonight with Greg Sutton still out with that concussion. Free kick coming up for Toronto FC. When you have Carl Robinson here, you know the way he likes to strike it. He can drive it. Yep, he's doing it right now, looking for Dickio. Looking for Dickio. Melbourne, though, does nicely to head it away. Well, both Cahill and Melbourne know the aerial quality of Danny Dickio, so they're looking for any edge with their timing, just experience, positioning himself around him there. It looks like he grabbed him a little bit. Free kick, Aston Villa. We look at uh, Stillian Petrov. Well, you know Dickio doesn't complain. He gets on with it. You got to love those type of forwards. That's why he's a fan favorite here. Questions about his fitness for tonight with a back injury, but very much a part of the starting eleven for Toronto FC. Who is they're missing Jeff Cunningham tonight? Is he's been plagued by injuries after a bright start when he came over from Real Salt Lake. Coming through, Maurice Adu. Adu putting the pressure on, trying to get around O'Halloran. Marvell win. And you get that little detail, like the positioning of Andy Welsh right there. After Adu made that penetration, got into the area, the ball was played out. He was still sitting in a wide position. He didn't close down on Craig Gardner and come in and try to recover the ball right there, higher to their goal. Like this. Ronnie O'Brien serving it in. Kale heads it away. Welsh puts the pressure on. This time he does. But instead. Gardner gets corner. That's a good point, though. Welsh was right there to at least attempt to keep the player alive in their favor. Gareth Berry. Gardner, the right back, getting forward. Harewood and Moore central. Blocked by Welsh. Moore plays it back out to Ashley Young. Punched out by Monsalve Stiver. We'll try to keep it in play. Sails over Luke Moore's hand, but Andy Welsh. I think he had to head it away because he was unsure who was behind it. Just a little lack of communication. You see, look at this ball coming in. I think they're giving him too much space. Look, they're backing off there. Plays out to Young. No pressure again. Gets a good look on goal. Keeper does well to get out there. But look at this cross. It's got the pace, the trajectory. Melbourne got up for that header again. The big defender can get forward 
scored a goal last year for Aston Villa in the Barclays Premier League. One minute of stoppage time, so we're in the final minute of this first half of play. Is there something left for Toronto FC? Maybe not. Ashley Young. It's a cross off back post coming through was Gareth Barry. Welsh trying to control for Toronto FC. Luke Moore is down in the six. He was hurt on that play. Maurice Adu. Dickio getting in position. Melbourne there instead. Coming through seven. Really, again, the center backs have been so good with their positioning. That ball was perfect. Most defenders would have been beaten. That's the quality of Melbourne, the way that he can read it, anticipate, rise up, and just head that out. But then you get the deflection. The Samuel was in a perfect position to strike. It just gets a... Looked like he was striking on goal, but went off the foot. Ronnie O'Brien sending this one in. Robinson keeps it alive. Flicked by Welsh. Stuart Taylor, though, was staring. And as Zoltan Stiver gets on to it, that's the end of the first half of play here in Toronto. So, two goals from Luke Moore. The difference in this one, Danny Dicchio thought he had scored for Toronto FC. Called back on what you might call a dubious offside call. But all in all, good 45 minutes really from both teams. Well, I think Toronto FC is in this match. I mean, they're playing well. They deserve the goal. It should be 2-1. It's 2-0 against the run of play in the counter. The quality of the players from Aston Villa came through. You saw the players like Petrov that even if he gets a couple of balls, a handful of balls, that he can make those decisive, critical passes and split the defense to forwards who want to get into the area and know how to make the most out of those opportunities. All right, let's go down to Mark. Mark, what do you got? Marvell, certainly not the scoreline you guys wanted to see to after 45 minutes, but you have to feel good about the way the team's playing. Uh, um, judging from the beginning of the season until now, I think we're really coming together, and Villa's a great side. Uh, their first goal was, that was an amazing ball. I mean, I don't know what, uh, what else Tyrone could have done about that, but um, I think we're going to do better uh, as we go on. Guys up in the booth were making comments about your confidence over there on the right side and, and the time with the national team maybe helping that. Can you talk about that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, once you go up there and you play with the best that America has to offer, then uh, you come here and you feel a little confident knowing that um, you have uh, you can do um, to, the, to, to your potential, and it's it's a lot more than you'd expect at times once you get tested. But coming here, I feel like I can uh, use certain abilities to help out my team. Thanks a lot, and best of luck in the second half. Dave, back upstairs to you. Marvel win. Great first 45. All right, indeed. And Toronto, as Christopher said, right in this match. And we have another half to go. Toronto FC, Aston Villa on FSC. Dave Johnson back at halftime with Christopher Sullivan. We were talking about this. You look at the score line, and maybe it's not a surprise. Aston Villa, very good side. But Toronto FC's approach has been so positive. In some ways, that's how they, they conceded the goals because they were very much going forward and playing the way you wanted to see them play tonight. Yeah, I think they were playing right. I mean, they transitioned out of midfield very good. The forwards are working well together. They have a good understanding. These are guys who have only worked together for a month now. They're finding each other. They're transitioning well. I like the way that Toronto is playing. But when you look at players like Ashley Young, the pass that he put through, Petrov, the forwards, how they're just sniffing around the goal and finding and making the most and being decisive, that becomes very complicated so you have to manage the match you need those opportunities like the opportunities that they had they have one goal that didn't go their way let's see if they can pick it up in the second half and well that's the case when you talk about that ball Ashley Young played that led to the first goal by Luke Moore we're, we're talking about uh, quality here and that's really what's what's made the, the difference in this game just that that quality of Aston Villa 
Well, you got forwards and you have other players that are coming in the second half. You're going to see Rio Coker, who's a player that has personality. He's a player that has enthusiasm. He can make other players around him better. Should be interesting to see in the second half if they can even elevate it. Aston Villa, I think that they can with the quality that's coming on. For Toronto, you have the same players pretty much that are going to stick it out there. They need to get a quick goal, pressure a little bit higher, take a risk that they could get a third goal against them and try to push this game. All right, we'll see how that plays out in the next 45 minutes. Toronto FC and Aston Villa on the way. Highlights of this first half of this international competition in Toronto. We're back in a moment. Villa from Bebo Field in Toronto. And indeed, 2 0 is our halftime score. Dave Johnson back at halftime with uh, Christopher Sullivan. Yet, yeah, 2 0. The score really could have been 2 to 1. And you'll see why as we take a look at the uh, first half highlights. But it starts very, a lot of promise from Aston Villa. Well, you see that space. Ashley Young separates himself in the midfield. Great pass, just slots it right behind the defender, right behind Tyrone Marshall. Look at the effect. Perfect pace. He's got enough time to approach the goalkeeper with enough space. Great finish. Great ball, as you see, played by uh, Ashley Long, Young, Luke Moore getting the goal. Now, Toronto FC coming right back. This is end-to-end. -end. Well, this is a glimpse of what they did well. The two forwards were working well together. They went the direct approach. Aston Villa comes right back, does the same thing. Now, look at this. The ball's going to get lost from Edu. And Petrov is very smart, like a predator. He looks to his right, slots it right into the feet of Harewood. Harewood, and there comes Luke Moore right at the doorstep. Well, uh, Harewood had a chance for the first goal in Aston Villa uniform, but instead it's Luke Moore that gets the goal. So 2 nothing at this point. And you see, he's going to freeze Brennan right there. Brennan has to stay home on us, looks to his left, slots it right to the right. So Aston Villa, they are just able to seize on their opportunities. The other there, though, Toronto FC with an opportunity. Well, I like this because it was quick one-touch passing. Even on the finish, Dickio came through. Great little touch. Definitely was onside by two players who kept him. Now, he was offside when he received it, but not when the ball was played. Take a look at the numbers from this first half of play. Anything jump out? No, I just think that the rhythm and the touches of Toronto was very good in the midfield. They just couldn't hold those counterattacks. Pretty even first half, both sides. All right, even first half, but Aston Villa with the uh, two goals. And they lead 2-0 on top of Toronto FC. We're coming back with the second half at Vivo Field in just a moment, right here on FSC. Turn to the field for the second half of this friendly between Toronto FC and Aston Villa. Again, Aston Villa with the lead right now, 2 0, as uh, Luke Moore with both goals. Of course, sir, we're talking about a Barclays Premier League team, Aston Villa, and it's back on FSC returning August 11th. You could catch Barclays Premier League on Fox Soccer Channel. You'll be seeing Aston Villa. As this Aston Villa team, again, with a lot of ambition, this is a team that won the, the European Cup back in 1982, and they believe they should be back among Europe's elite. They have an American owner, Randy Lerner, who many know, promoting the Cleveland Browns, and they feel they have everything in place to really make a serious run at the Barclays Premier League and then, therefore, Europe. And I think they certainly have the coach that has the concept, that has the personality, that has the charisma, that can put his hands in a team that's talented, young, a lot of international, so it's about the form of the day to see where they are in three weeks. Other teams like Liverpool spending a lot of money this year. They're trying to strengthen themselves with an ambition to win the league. Chelsea, we just saw them a few weeks here. Manchester United trying to get Tevez. Should be excited. This is that time of year, Dave, when you know everyone's interested in seeing their new team, how they're going to come out. It's exciting all over the world. And we're seeing that tonight with the unveiling, if you will, of the 2007-2008 Aston Villa team. The one negative, Thomas Sorensen, Danish international keeper, an injured hamstring in the first half, although it's not believed to be serious. So we look at uh, Luke Moore and, again, one of the new signings, Marlon Harewood. The two significant signings for Aston Villa, Marlon Harewood and also Nigel Rio Coker, both played at West Ham. 
We've already seen Harewood, and I would expect we might see some of Nigel Rio Coker tonight coming out of the midfield for Aston Villa. We cannot confirm any substitutes for you, but we expect a number of changes in the second half, at least from the Aston Villa team, as uh, they try to get off to a successful start of their North American tour. Well, I can see one already. Patrick Berger is coming in, so he'll come in the central midfield position. Looks like he's coming in for Gareth. I don't know if Gareth Barry is staying in or not. Steiger still staying in the two forwards, and I think he's good. You know, he might change around 60 minutes, 65 minutes. These guys have done well in the first half. Let him run a little bit longer. All right, so we do indeed see Patrick Berger as we wait for the signal from referee Silvio Petrescu. Patrick Berger coming in. 33-year-old Czech international. And we're underway. And also Wilfred Buma is coming. So there have been some changes and we'll try to get as many of those as we can as they're relayed to us as ball flicked ahead for Carl Robinson. And one thing we talked about Patrick. earlier, Dave, you had said that Craig Gardner is normally a midfield player, so he stepped up from the right back position and he's coming to central midfield along with Berger. Who is on that, the ball right yeah, now. Who's yep. come on the ball. It looks like Petrov has come out, as has Barry. So Petrov and Barry appear to be out. And Buma, Wilfred Buma, a Dutch international. And Patrick Berger on. Ronnie O'Brien pouncing on it. Trying to get through Craig Gardner, who is Christopher mentioned, has now moved into the midfield. Buma playing at the back. Which is it all the way over to the right? Berger knocks it back. He's asked to go patiently through midfield. Also another substitution. He's come on for Olaf Melbert. Ridgewell, somebody who's looking to, to find a regular spot. Uh, there's a jam in the central defense position at Aston Villa. So a throw in coming up for Aston Villa. We see that they put Boom and Bridgewell in the central. They put Cahill from a central position going out to the wide right, right back position. Booma. Now coming forward. Samuel. The corner kick coming up for Toronto FC. We can also confirm where the Danny Dicchio has come out and Andrea Lombardo just back from the under 20 World Cup is in for Toronto FC. Ronnie O'Brien sending it in. A duel lets it go by for Donovan. Yeah, you have a heavy concentration coming at the near post. Lombardo does well to get up. Marshall goes to the near post. The ball drops in the back post. He had good numbers there from Toronto. Donovan ended up getting the shot. O'Brien once again. Berger gets up and yet another corner kick. See the chance. Toronto FC looking to get on the board. Tyrone Marshall had gotten forward. 
And now Toronto with all the numbers forward, they have to play it back to David Monsovic, their keeper. Nicely done by Marvell Wynn. That's well done from Edu. Colin Samuel. Marking is Cahill. Maurice Edu. Samuel trying to back heel. Back to Edu. Now Robinson. Wide to Andy Welsh. Robinson slots it. Robinson trying to send it through a chance here. It's in the net. Donovan has scored. And you love to see a player persevere. Donovan had an opportunity on the last corner before. But this is just great football. Good patience. It starts with this pass from Robinson. Donovan makes an inside run. It comes back to the outside. Dummy run right here. Nice first time. Everything's on the ground like Barcelona. Slips the last pass through. Great concentration. World class finish. And an excellent collective team goal. Todd Donovan has put Toronto FC on the board. Well, so many players, Dave, touch the ball, and that's what you like. That pulls the team together, gets the energy going, gets the confidence coming through this team. We talked about it before in the first half that they were doing everything right. Now this is a game. 2-1, they're in this game. They have to solidify the midfield, be smart, manage the match, look for the right phases going forward. Donovan getting forward again. Cahill knocking it away. And sometimes you get that when you change a player who's been playing 45 minutes. He does well using his body, Samuel. Ashley Young cries it away. The initial push off was great when he gets into those positions right in the axe, uses his body, pulls away, but then he tried to make a one on one movement and lost it. Go in, Ashley Villa. Going back to what I was saying before, that Cahill initially was in the central position. They pushed him out wide. If you look where that final pass, it went right in between Bridgewell and Cahill. They were both, you know, just that understanding, that kind of been playing 45 minutes there. Cahill gets in a wider position. Boom, slipping right through. Goal. Well, bright start for Toronto. That's a great point. It was Toronto seizing on changes made in the Aston Villa 11. And Donovan. What a creative idea that, that Ronnie made, and he yeah. was a beneficiary. Initially, I thought he was killing the space, but then that dummy run from Edu that let it go by really opened things up again to get the ball to the feet of Robinson. Great work. Look more now. That's both goals for Aston Villa. Stiver trying to get it wide. Ashley Young getting forward. Hellwood turns. It's blocked by Marshall. Gardner now in a midfield role for Aston Villa is pressuring. Pushing a little bit higher here. You see in the first half they dropped off about two thirds of the field. Lombardo can't hold on to it there. Now you see him pressing three quarters even more a little bit. But that Ashley Young is a talented player. In one on one situations he likes to likes to move into those positive areas. He's good at releasing the ball quickly. Great ball. All played forward for Colin Samuel. It is just touched back by Wilford Bullock. Puma just got his boot on it. He was never really in danger with the way that he took his position. He just wanted to make sure that he kept possession. That's why he went wider and slide. Good speed from Puma. Puma came up through PSV in Holland. Oh, Holloran. Now you're seeing Martin O'Neill off the bench. Giving indications, he, he realizes that Toronto's coming on. He knows this is a dangerous team. Picks up the foul here. He's applauding now. These are the moments when you pick up your team. You want to maintain possession. You want to be smart. In the first half, they have Petrov. They had the, the intelligence and experience of a player like Gareth Barry, who can keep maintain that rhythm for their team. Gardner drives, and I think he's won a corner kick. Is that ricochet? And Craig Gardner, the started on defense, now in midfield. As we look at Martin O'Neill. He's having a word with his assistant. He brought his assistants over from Celtic, and they were with him. That successful run at 
Scotland. So a corner kick here for Aston Villa. Ashley Young has come over to take it. See if he can take some of the sting out of this Toronto FC momentum. There were some streamers in that corner. Gardner. Zoltan Stever. All set and chested down by Ridgewell. And Toronto, they're not going to be able to. Let's see if they are. Samuel has asked if he'll have numbers up. O'Halloran tackles it away. By evidence that it was Ridgewell, a defender, who chested the ball down at the other end of the field. Toronto missed out on an opportunity of a counterattack. Well, you see, Lombardo was free at the far post right there. But Samuel wasn't denying him, and he was, he was not ignoring him. He was trying to get to that position. Ronnie O'Brien made an overlapping run wide to come around them. They missed the opportunity because he didn't have the support behind him. Cahill sends it in looking for Luke Moore, headed away by Marshall. Robinson comes back. Some tense moments as Toronto just back in the game, not wanting to concede a third goal. That uh, is better football right here on the break. Marvell win. Lombardo is going central. Tackled away by O'Halloran. That's an important tackle. You have three players getting in the area. Lombardo's moving all over, just trying to break into the open spaces. They're trying to release him. O'Halloran, one of the young players, trying to make a mark with Aston Villa. Maurice Anu, a young player, making his mark with Toronto. Samuel now darts and shoots. They're starting to pull their fans into the game. Not much more on the attack. You see Carl Robinson applauding. They're pushing up, pressuring a little more in the midfield. Here's Adu. Look how strong he is on the ball. A little cutback. Picks his head up before. Quicker on the ball than we saw at the beginning of the season. Maurice Adu, we saw him. In fact, as we worked the game together, he scored against Chicago. Toronto FC continues to put the pressure on. This is Robinson. Robinson trying to get into Lombardo. Robinson stays with it. Lombardo hits it up. But the flag is up. The flag is up. Here on the near side, the flag is up. And for the second time tonight, the fans will cheer and then boo. Yeah, it could be a handball. Yeah. Let's see what call it is right here. But anytime you get the ball and you win it here from these deep positions, look, you get behind the, the midfielders. He waits till the last minute. Look like he might have been off at that point. Well, it's either. The offer, Carl Robinson, whether he handed, handled the ball, but either way, here comes Toronto the other way once again. Ronnie O'Brien. Good ball. Trying to switch it out to Andy Welsh. Pressure by Donovan, who's got so much more involved coming from his back position. That's right, Dave. You need that commitment after on the second ball. Donovan's getting tighter, pinching in behind Welsh. Good attempt there with that diagonal ball. Gets head down. Cahill was positioned well. And Donovan just comes in, robs the ball in the space, gets taken down. But look at the location. You got Ronnie O'Brien, who loves this position right here because he's got the players, the presence in the area. See what they can do. The momentum is really picking up for Toronto. And you feel it with this crowd. O'Brien sending it in. Well, we have a whistle, and it'll be a free kick coming up. For Aston Villa. Well, let's take a look at handball offside. Carl Robinson's coming through. Comes up. And you see, it uh, just comes right and up against his, his hand. Yeah. That's what keeps it in play. Yeah. Good call from the ref. That's a pity. They should have gotten the first one in, in the first half. We'd be looking at a 2 2 game. Yeah. This is what you look for, Dave. This is the response. You come back out, and you know that Mo Johnson told his team, hey, you guys are playing well. With a talented team, you just got to put it together and be more decisive when you get forward. Now you're starting to see players like Carl Robinson get forward. And who's taking those chances? We said they got to take the risk. They might get a third goal against them, but this is where you push it against Aston Villa. There's a case of the referee assisted on that handball making the call as he was the one to raise the flag. But I think you're right that Toronto has every reason to be buoyant and confident, and they're showing it. And he's getting the pressure from Lombard. Also, the work rate of Samuel has been fantastic. I mean, he hasn't dropped at all in his energy level. I think Dickey will have to come out because he's probably suffering from the back injury. But Lombardo has done well. Where is it? 
Pardon me, that's Marvell Wynn sending it. The center. He's not going to give him that one. Well, first touch was good. The second one, he went down a little too early. A little too easily. Good ball from Berger. Oh, to Luke Moore, he is trouble. Not on the same page. And that's the pressure you need. You see the ball come into Samuel here. The first touch was great. He just tries to separate himself. Goes down, gets a little clip, but not enough. Not enough to get the call. Almost 60 minutes in. Lombardo putting the pressure on. And Lombardo is Chris we're talking about coming on for Danny Dickio. Lombardo, young Canadian, was with the, the other 20 national team. He spent some time actually in Italy as well. Harewood. Welsh stumbling over the ball, but Donovan cleans it up. They do. Donovan's been a lot sharper. He's releasing the ball so much faster in transition. You see Robinson just slowing the pace down a little bit more. They're going to get O'Brien more central. Berger trying to get a hold of it. And he does. You see Martin O'Neill is just screaming at the forward, the point forward, saying, you got to move in and make that run every time. Open things up. The assistant coach as well has put his hands up. Good ball. Oh, Steiner for Luke Moore. Flag is up on the far side. But Zoltan Steiber, the Hungarian Youth International, has really shown some good stuff tonight. Yeah, the splitting passes has been good. We, one thing we saw earlier as well, he can release the ball quickly. Clearly offside right here. Good call from the referee. But I don't think that Steiber, for me, for, for a young player coming in, he needs a lot more rhythm, a lot more contact on the ball. We saw Potemo Blanco the other day in 59 minutes. He had... 57 touches, you know, and every minute he had a touch. I think Stivers only had the ball 10 times today. Samuel, nice turn after getting the ball from O'Brien back now. O'Brien gets it on his left. Mm. He's there. Donovan. Welsh. Still not out of danger. Patrick Berger gets it on his left foot, sending it in. But Salve has to make the save as it was flicked on. That's what you like from your young keeper. But Salve hangs in there. Great redirection at the far post. Stays calm. Nice little split step. Stretches out. Good block. Ashley Young again. Luke Moore flicked it on. It ricocheted on the Toronto defender. Ashley Young again cuts inside. Wilfred Boma. You see Ashley Young again. Great movement. Look at this though. Berger, far post. You get the redirection right here. Good reaction. He stays home. Doesn't guess left. 
Plays it out wide. Well done. It was Liam Bridgewell that had that flick. Let's go to Mark Bernardino. Mark, what's up? Yeah, Dave, uh, I talked to Mo Johnson coming out of the locker room, and he told me he was going to play the starting 11 with the one exception of the change for about 15 minutes here in the second half. But as you can sense, with the crowd getting behind them, and they've now equalized, things have uh, really strayed a little bit from that plan. But we might see a few substitutions in about the next five to ten minutes. Aston Villa, Luke Moore trying to get through the midfield instead. Tyrone Marshall standing him up. Certainly, as Mark talked about it, Toronto does not have the depth of an Aston Villa, but they are now really pushing this Aston Villa team. Maurice Adil. Winning it, though, is Buma. Adil stays down. Heroin. The pressure's on. You see the control from Luke Moore was good. Just couldn't connect to Heroin. I think Moore has been the more impressive of the two for me, of the forwards. He makes himself more available. He's a little bit more mobile, has better suppleness, has a good instinct to get around the goal. I haven't seen Harewood really, really that dangerous number nine that you look for. One thing that we just heard from Mark talking about the changes, the way that Toronto has played in the second half, the ball has been moving so quickly. A lot of one-touch passing, a lot of interchanging. It's not just athletic fighting and duels in the midfield. They're moving the ball, they're playing well collectively. When that's on, you normally don't change it. You don't want to disrupt that because they're playing good football together. You don't want to put in players just to fight. So I think that he's going to keep them in for a little bit longer. Tyra Marshall is the injured yeah. TFC player. And it looks like they're going to bring in Andrew Boyan. So they are making a substitution. That's it for Tyrell Marshall. His night is done. He really stepped up in the second half. His positioning was better. Let that one goal get behind him. But he's won a lot of balls there. You saw in that last movement in the midfield, he, he was holding off Luke Moore. Two, three players around and then just had the outlet on the wide position. So Marshall headed to the changing room. Boyan's comes on. Andrew Boyan's. So now we're getting the throw in from Stephen O'Halloran. But Aston Villa has some substitutions. Let's go to Mark Rodrigo. Mark, what's up? Yeah, Dave, you saw Tyrone Marshall just make his way to the locker room, and actually I just had a quick word with him. He said that he's actually been battling a stomach virus for about the past day and a half. So nothing serious, probably something he'll get over in the next 24 hours, but just precautionary here, Dave. Now that'll take it out of you as uh, he leaves and now we see Gabby Agler Agman Lahore coming on he's one of the uh, substitutions also Nigel Rio Coker this is a look at the other big signing for Aston Villa this offseason and Martin Larson also coming on the Danish international so more changes Wilfred Buma trying to get forward but Ronnie O'Brien stuffs that up Rio Coker with his first touch in an Aston Villa uniform and coming over from West Ham. He's a central midfielder. The other signing from West Ham, Marlon Harewood, who we've seen all night, is a forward. And this is a good time to introduce him. He's going to find a little bit more space in the midfield. He's already given directions, telling Martin Larson to pick up, go forward, pushing the space. He'll look for his moments when to get contact. Craig Gardner ahead to Luke Moore. Gabby Agbon Lahore also over there. Yeah, throw it coming up. He's already, I mean, this is a player, Martin O'Neill was saying, he brings a lot of enthusiasm to the forefront. Got a great personality already. He came in, he's talking to number 19, Ridgewell. He's saying, look, you need to play up very quickly. You got to play more faster. He's giving an indication to three, four players right when he came on the field. They need that direction. We're going to get a foul against Aston Villa. Free kick coming up. Well, it's realistic to the comments of Martin O'Neill. You talked about the... Uh, the spirit that he was expecting Nigel Rio Coker to bring into this Aston Villa team. So it was more than just his skill that he was looking at when he brought him over. It's always important. The personality of the player, what he brings on the field, the fight, the character. Monsalve, the goal kick. Toronto FC trying to get back on their horse. Andre Lombardo battling for it. Nigel Rio Coker, this player we've been talking about. 
wins it and keeps possession. And now we're going to get a foul, and this will uh, go against Lamar. And yeah, this is a simple little foul. You see, Rio Coker's just weaving, swerving around, trying to get away from Lombardo. As he escapes, he takes a late little knock. Larson, good ball for Ashley Young. Ashley Young going in Marvell win. Ashley Young gets the cross off. Ooh. Like Bonlahor got went up for it. He's just don't have the balance at the back post. But we talked about Young. Look at him when he takes people on, steps over, cuts, separates himself. Great cross at the back post. Now they're going to put in a player who can get to that back post and finish. Very good, John Carew. We're talking about John Carew, the Norwegian international. He'll replace the new signing, Marlon Harewood. Carew came over from Lyon last year and joined Aston Villa. And recently scored two goals for Norway in a 4 0 win over Hungary in European qualifying. So, a quality player replaces a quality player. That's this is the depth you're looking at from Aston Villa. And I think you'll get a little more from Carew because he understands the players here he's played. Took a while for Harewood to get on the same page. Not a bad outing. But Carew's playing so many important teams. He's played with Valencia, Besiktas. He's also played with, with uh, Roma, Lyon. And an additional substitution so Carew for Aston comes Villa on. coming out of the game number nine, Roland Harewood. And putting into the game number ten. Gardner Carew. on the throw in. Carew trying to get his first touch. And you can see how Martin O'Neill forms a side first. I mean, you have a player like Harewood to back up Carew. You always need the, the two players at every position. Right. But one thing that I'm seeing right now, Dave, is they're pushing them much higher. Berger's getting right behind the forwards, as is Ashley Young. So they're pressuring more than three quarters of the field to make it more complicated for the back line to play through the midfield. This is when they do really has to step up. Robinson has to show. They have to be quick in transition to maintain possession. They haven't really had the rhythm in the last four or five minutes. Martin Larson. Long ball over the top. And Bottle Hort battling for it. Trying to get it off to Kuro instead. Berger steps in, strikes it. Patrick Berger with the left foot from midfield. And he hesitated for a minute. That's his left foot. He sees, he wanted to know if Kuro was going to take that. Then he realizes it's coming to him. Look, he puts himself in a great position, gets dropped to the second player, takes that first touch, puts himself in a good position a little high. You saw Gabby Bottle Hort battling for it, and then Berger ending up with it. All right, again, we've got Major League Soccer on the way this weekend. Real Salt Lake and New England. It's 9 o'clock Eastern time live. Sounds like another road trip for my partner. Maurice Adu battling for it. Robinson stepping up. O'Brien. Good ball. Maurice Adu. Get another great run from Donovan just to open up the space. Good service from Pozniak, but it was Larson to head it away. This is John Carew. Hey, come here. Hey, Touch ahead. I think he wanted to get into Carew streaking up the flank, but I think he was playing to himself, but it was a good outlet pass. Well done from Carew to hold it up and, and just flick through. 72 minutes. Tie game here in Toronto. Lombardo making a run. Larson will be tested. Plays it back to his keeper, Stuart Taylor. Toronto is much sharper. Releasing the ball more quickly than what we saw last time when we covered them against Chicago. They're still playing well at the beginning of their uh, trip away. Where they had six games that were away from home. But I now you can see just that, that familiarity, the ability to release the ball quickly to connect. This team has better chemistry. Berger playing the ball through. Yeah. Nicely <laughs> done by Jim Brennan. That was nice an opportunity. Ball, yeah, that was an opportunity for Marsala to come out and give one right back away to Aston Villa. Another throw in for Aston Villa. Berger working hard. He's searching. Brennan staying with him. And Bonlehor plays it out wide to Ashley Young. Young likes to attack. Coming in to close him down, O'Brien, but O'Brien a foul and a free kick. Ashley Young, the player, is down. 
And actually, it would have been interesting if he played that on because he'd already released the ball. Puma came through with a great cross. After that would have been complicated in the air. Here he is. He's just, look at his center of gravity. He's taking on Wynn, who's very fast, separates himself. O'Brien comes back in just to chop him down. And now they're going to have the players. you got Carew at the back post, who positioned well. Also, Martin Larson, who we've seen before. He's good in the air. It's an important well for Boma coming from the left back. Was about to swing it in, but they get the call. This is just as good a free kick. So Ashley Young sitting in, but Solvik does well. Great concentration from the young keeper. And not really pulling him off his line. It was too close to him. Have to go a little bit away from him to make it difficult. Oh, and Samuel coming all the way back. Now Bosniak. Lombardo's touch fails him. 2-2 two, two game, 75 minutes in. Good possession there from Pozniak to make the decision not to go forward, play back in the midfield, keep the ball a little bit more. Out of the feet of Aston Villa. Gardner. Agbalahor battling Donovan, holding his own, but it's a throw. You ready? You ready? And it looks like we're getting Joey Mello to come in. And he'll come in for Maurice Edu, who... As always, was very active. But they do will come out. Joey Mello will come in. 17 year old Canadian. He always gives it great effort. Got forward in the second half. Early really started stimulating the attack for Toronto. But Carl Robinson gives everything for the team. You see, he's worn down. Oh, oh the bike! But the save by Monsalve has a chance there for Aston Villas. Well, look at the positioning right here, Amore. He tries to get over, gets held down. Looks like he jumped a little bit too early. So Joey Mello's come on, Lombardo now. But Rio Coker just not giving him an inch in that midfield. The touch. Berger, the response, a throw it for Toronto. The ball always finds the player. Right to Mo Johnson. And he was a player. And now a free kick is found in Toronto FC. Ronnie O'Brien, so good on set pieces. Can he give Toronto FC the Andrew, one that will deliver the lead? And I know Andrew Boyd's coming in there. They got a heavy presence in the heart of the air. Let's see where he puts this. So Brian sending this one in. Larson got ahead on it. The defender for Aston Villa while the throw in, though, Toronto. Bo Johnson just said a couple of words to O'Brien. Lombardo. Little flick, he'll appeal for a handball against Real Coker that's not coming, but it'll be a corner kick. Referee doesn't take it, says it's unintentional. Lombardo does well in his position, tries to flick it back in between the two players, still get the corner kick. Another set piece for Toronto, Ronnie O'Brien. Pozniak. O'Brien sends it in, driven by Boyens. Andrew Boyens. And that's the special touch you need, that little surprise element. Mix it up, a little variation, give him credit. Short corner comes in, drops it back out. Pinpoint precision, nice shot. O'Brien again. Lombardo headed it down. But Aston Villa a chance to clear, but not yet. Toronto keeps the pressure. O'Brien again, Larson with authority. And probably some frustration clears it. So good this second half. O'Brien! 
Well, good idea. Puts himself in a good position. We see when O'Brien gets into central, makes things happen. Here's the corner. Look at this. Ingenuity. Quick touch, pause. Second one, he plays it right in. Good strike on the first one. Keep it covered at the near post. But you like to pull players out, mix it up a little variation, look for those holes. Andrew Boyens almost putting Toronto hit. That's a sign when your team's on top of the game, when you're starting to control the game, when you're managing, you start getting the confidence in your team. Approaching the 80th minute as Gardner gets forward for Aston Villa. Craig Gardner. Now Berger. Berger slotting it ahead. The flick by Carew goes nowhere. Robinson. Nigel Rio Coker winning the ball. Well, we've got whistles and a foul, but there you see the emphasis of Rio Coker in that midfield. Yeah, and you see before Carew that the, the creativity is very good with the feet for a big man. You know, he's technical with both feet. He's fast, he's strong, he's good in the air, he's intelligent. I think that th that combination for me is going to be a little better than Harewood. I like Luke Moore, what we've seen of him tonight. He's very good. On the other side, Samuel has been great. His work rate, what he's done off the ball, fighting for his team to hold it up in the axe has been fantastic. Long ball played for Carew. It brings Monsalve out. There's the big presence of John Carew getting forward down that left side. Lombardo tangled up with Rio Coker. A free kick Toronto FC. And again, Donovan making a nice, precise pass on the ground. Lombardo arrives at the right time, makes a good early run, breaks the pressure behind the three midfielders. You had Berger and Rio Coker spread out. Ashley Young was far on the left side. Good movement. Berger. Luke Moore. He has that bundle hole wide, instead he plays it back to Gardner. Good tackle. Posniak is right there. Robinson battles with Berger. Jersey tugs and a free kick coming up for Aston Villa. And that last little possession, David, so important. Ronnie O'Brien not to force the issue, keep possession. Those are important times when you need to maintain a little bit of a rhythm, take the pressure off your team. Abuma tried to slot it, instead Marvel win intervene. Now. Ooh. Oh, they tried to link up top with Samuel and Lombardo. Instead, Larson in the central defense, along with Ridgewell, sorting it out. Again, Samuel opened up the middle for him, just spacing him out with a run. Oh, they found him. They find Luke Moore. That's to him. And Bondelor showing for it, drives it. Coming through, Carew. John Carew scores, and Aston Villa is quiet in the crowd. And that's why we were saying possession is just so important, vital in the midfield. You gotta pick your moments when you want to go forward. Samuel made a great run. Robinson lost the ball, trying to hit him on the first time. And here's the transition. Look at, we talked about Luke Moore. Keeps it, separates himself. Boom, slips it right behind the back. Carew gets right in the heart of the area. This is what he does. He's been doing it his whole life. Great finish. Heads up, come from the defense, slots in. Look at the technique. Great reception, pauses, pauses, boom. Plays right behind. Slots it right across. Great finish. Back on the horse, sliding the ball across, and a great finish from Crew. It's three to two. Larson. Back on the horse is fouled. It's such a fine line. You know, Toronto was playing so well. They were pushing, pushing, but then those moments when you need to maintain possession. We saw that one with Ronnie O'Brien a couple minutes ago where I think he gave it away too early, was pressing the issue, played a little vertical ball. That's when you need to control the middle of the field. Flag up. And not allow Austin Villa to get so much of the ball. Well, 3-2 now. This one not done. So many chances for Toronto FC. They had this crowd just rocking in anticipation that there would be that go-ahead goal. And a couple take it back that uh, certainly frustrating. Luke Moore. Berger streaking through. Mello under pressure heads it back. Rio Coker trying to get on to it. Collides with Samuel. O'Brien challenges Rio Coker and keeps possession. Back heel by Carew. And he's known for his back heels as John Carew. 
both his goal scoring chances and nifty little flicks, but unable to find anyone to have a run. Villa with the vital possession. Well, we talked about the good teams, and even when they're up against it, the other team is pushing the game, has the momentum, it's moving through the midfield strongly. When you get your opportunities, just that understanding, the experience to be decisive, that's what we've seen from Aston Villa. The money players have come through. And Luke Moore was so instrumental in that goal. I mean, Received the ball, pulled away, paused, gave the timing for the winger to come through. Perfect timing. Aston Villa again, looking for Luke Moore. Up the head of Boyd, but that's Carrillo! Oh! Well, he got a good look on that one. The ball bounced. Went a little bit higher than I think he thought it was because it wasn't natural, natural grass. He tried to get over it. Lombardo lays it up nicely for O'Brien. Pozniak getting forward. Lombardo trying to get around Ridgewell, the defender could not. Well, hard not to offer Luke Moore man of the match. Again, he right. scores two, and then he sets up the third. Yeah, for me, I think that he's a, he was a talent today. Well, you had some great, great, great efforts as well from Toronto. Is there something left in TFC? Yeah, that's the one again you don't want to force. You see Lombardo is moving with Martin Larson. That's when you want to look for the diagonal run from Samuel behind when he takes him in. A little bit smarter in midfield. Berger plays it ahead. Looking for Luke Moore. Agbonlahor comes through, drives it safe. Agbonlahor was Aston Villa's leading scorer last year with nine. Great work again from Monsala to hang there, get down low. It'll be Berger to take this corner. That clock ticking away. Gardner comes through. Not what he wanted. Lombardo wins it. Lombardo. Robinson looking for a win as they crash the castle. Nigel Rio Cooper step for step. Ball. Mello. Lombardo. He's got one. Back post, Marvell win. O'Brien, that's who you want to have it. O'Brien coming through. It's not done. They say that Ronnie, he knows. He took that extra touch. Great control with his chest. All right, let's go back to the last goal and see what happened. You see Agbonlahor coming through. Well, you're going to see after the first touch right here, the final touch, that the question is, is Carew wow. offside? Look at that. It's coming off his foot. Makes a strong case for offside. Initially, no. Now he just pulls a little bit further. Looks like he's off. The flick by Carew ahead. Berger. Well, if you judge Dickio's goal that was called back offside, that clearly should have been called. But obviously, the referee assistant thought he had hit the ball or passed it when right. he really hadn't. Sure. And I think it, uh, it fooled the referee assistant. Ashley Young driving it through. We'll get a corner kick. Two minutes stoppage. Yeah, two minutes stoppage. 
So a corner kick. Again, you look at the explosive, the explosiveness, the ability to come in from those wide positions. Ashley Young's been great. He did it from the right side, the left side. You know how fast Marvel win is. He blew right by him there. All right, let's go to Mark Rodriguez real quick. Mark, what's up? Yeah, Dave, you showed that replay again a couple of times on the John Carew goal, and actually the entire coaching staff for Toronto FC immediately up off the bench because the call they didn't get, as you said, on Dicchio's goal there in the first half, and it goes against them here in the second half. Very decisive. At the same end of the field as well, Marvel Wynn was down. That's why we had the delays. We look at Bob Ganser and the TFC bench. So a corner kick coming up here for Patrick Berger. Berger sending this in. Larson was trying to get up for it, couldn't, but he seemed to be the target, the big defender. And it looks like uh, we'll get two minutes of stoppage time. So two minutes for Toronto. To probably justly get an equalizer if they get because boy they they've had some bad luck tonight. Well this is when you want to stay disciplined, organized, attentive and alert, and not give up another goal, try to get something on the break through the midfield. Carew to look more. Flag was up, more was offside. And you talk about the calls and some days in football it just doesn't go your way. I think that Martin O'Neill was seeing him there on the bench. He has a lot of respect for Mo Johnson's team, the way they came out, the way th that they responded in the second half, coming back out 2-0 down. And that's not to take it away from Aston Villa, it's just you, well, Lombardo. Lombardo getting forward, Ridgewell marking. That yeah, first touch took him away. Yeah. It saved Ridgewell probably. Lombardo setting it through, Sandra. He wants a corner. Or a foul or something, either way, he's not going to get it. It's a goal kick. Well, he did everything right. He arrived in the moment, but he had that right hand back up against Buma. He was trying to control his body posture. He couldn't really get around to redirect it. Big opportunity. That's what we were talking about. Put himself in a good position twice. First touch. You see that Lombardo took his angle away. The second one right here, he doesn't make the most of the opportunity. Not a sight Toronto FC fans wanted to see the way Marvel Wynn went off the field. Cheers as Stuart Taylor takes his time. TFC fans want their team to have another crack. Off Boyens. Lombardo. Uh, he almost had the adjustment. He started breaking out into the corner, came back as the ball was played behind him. Nigel Rio Coker. Ooh, Looks ball. in the head there. Agbalaho. Agbalaho. Right foot sends it through. Loop ball. It's in the net. Three goals. And that should do it. And we talked about the quality going forward. That's why they paid 17 plus million dollars for Rio Coker. He came through, just separated himself, escaped through two players, had the vision. Look at the quick release right here. He's going to slip through. First touch. Now his eyes go one way, flicks it right there. That made the difference. He took three players. He was beat. He's on his way again. He's been great. Positions himself right in front of the goal. Luke Moore, free goals. What a day. And involved in the fourth. And again, Agbalahor showing his quality getting up the flank. But it all started. The catalyst again was Rio Corca. That little surge and explosion through the middle made the difference. Well, Nigel Rio Corca his Aston Villa debut showing his worth. And Aston Villa able to secure the victory in this friendly against Toronto FC despite a very strong effort from the home side. Exciting game, six goals. I mean, Toronto FC played fantastic, but the game's 90 minutes. You get that quality when they go forward. Like we said, Aston Villa, they're very decisive when they get those opportunities. They, they made the most of their chances, but great day for Toronto FC not to 
throw in the towel, come back out in the second half and play some good football. All right, let's go to Mark Rogadillo, who's with Mo Johnson. Mark? Coach, sensational second half effort. You guys come from two down to equalize. Of course, you don't want to give away that two, but great effort from your side. Yeah, I thought the, uh, the last battle hard. Uh, they played well. Second half especially. Uh, we gave up two soft goals. We rebounded back, but I felt that our third goal was offside. You know, the last few weeks we've seen Chelsea here. We've seen Now we've seen Aston Villa here. We've seen some clubs come over from England, and Major League Soccer is having some success. Yeah, it's having success, um, and rightly so. Um, I don't think we can be underestimated anymore. I think the way we play, we're playing attractive soccer, especially here at BMO Field. People who come and watch our games, uh, they're getting value for money. Job well done, Coach. Enjoy it. Thank you. Thank you. Back upstairs, Dave. All right, thanks, Mark. And I think well said by Mo Johnson. The fans here tonight got value for money. Well, you love the collective effort. You love it when a team comes back out. Both the goals from Toronto were team goals. When they were moving the ball very quickly, they got in the position. They took the initiative. They played positive in attack. And we said, you might catch a goal in the counter. You're going to give the opportunity when you take that risk. But that's the way you want to play. Well, so many uh, Toronto FC players that, that played well tonight and leading to this very competitive match. And I think Jim Donovan made a big difference in the second half, certainly helping lead to the two goals. Yeah, I think Todd Donovan really got into positions, into the corner. He scored that great goal. He had the opportunity on the corner kick. But in, and in, he had a handful. He had to deal with Ashley Young in the first half. Then Young went to the left side. But the middle of the field, when he put in a player like Rio Coker, I mean, he just made the difference. He slipped it. I didn't think they were going to give that late goal, but they did. All right, Aston Villa gets that late goal. And Aston Villa victorious tonight from Toronto. 4-2, the final Aston Villa victorious over Toronto FC. For Mark Rogadino, Christopher Sullivan, I'm Dave Johnson. Thanks for watching this international friendly on Fox Soccer Channel.